Today we're talking with Texas Land Commissioner Jerry Patterson about a really exciting event that's happening next month at the Alamo. Now, as, as Land Commissioner, the Alamo now falls under your purview that's right and, yeah. and leadership and uh, tell us about what's going to happen in February as we go into the siege of the Alamo well you know we all grew up in Texas or maybe you didn't grow up in Texas but nonetheless we're all Texans whether you born here or came here later and all of us know about the siege of Alamo and the names Crockett and Bowie and Travis and, and then after that most of us have heard about this iconic letter mm -hmm. the Liberty or death letter that Travis sent out during the siege in a desperate plea for reinforcements. And of course we got a little help, 32 folks came from Gonzales. But this letter is known as the Victory or Death uh, letter and it left under cover of darkness uh, on the 24th of February, 1836, by horseback by a courier named Albert Martin. Well, it's never returned. It's been 177 years and that letter that defines the Texas uh, spirit of liberty and sacrifice and courage has never been back to the Alamo since Travis sent it out. We're taking it back there uh, next month uh, to coincide with the 13 days of glory. Mm -hmm. You know, the song uh, by Marty Robbins, The Ballad of the Alamo. I'd sing it for you, but I don't yeah, think it's well, <laughs> like that. <laughs> In the southern part of Texas That's near it. the town of San Antonio. But, uh, so to correspond with that 13 day siege, we're gonna have it at the Alamo for public viewing and that will be the first time in 177 years. But it's returning in glory, uh, not surreptitiously under cover of darkness. And this is the letter that really almost defines what it is to be a Texan, this liberty or death attitude right. that, that many Texans like yourself carry forward as, as they go through their political positions and how to define themselves as a, a public servant and, uh, and a Texan. So, uh, well, the good news is, is that, you know, I consider myself a person who takes firm stands and without concern for the consequences, but unlike Travis, his firm stand cost him his life. I don't know any votes that I've cast or any positions I've taken that put me in physical jeopardy, but, you know, I guess you could say there's some similarities there, but Travis, uh, he knew, you know, he knew at that time he was writing a letter that the chances for survival were very slim, many elected to stay. Much like our own founding fathers of the country, when they signed the yes. Declaration of Independence right. and pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor, right. and and many of those people lost all three. Exactly. In, yeah. in that uh, in that war. Yeah. And uh, you, know, you wonder from time to time in this day and time, where do we find leaders like that that are willing to take that kind of a stand? Well, yeah. I mean, where do we find uh, people who can uh, live up to the Travis Bowie Crockett? Uh, Seguin, uh, De Savala, uh, or even uh, folks like uh, little-known Texas names like Dan Moody, mm -hmm. the guy who took on the Klan in the 1920s, or Alan Shivers, who was governor, the Democrat governor of Texas in 1953 that endorsed the Republican candidate for president, Dwight Eisenhower, mm -hmm. over an issue having to do with submerged land in the Gulf of Mexico, mm -hmm. who put his state up, up in front of his party. Yeah, where do we find people like that? And, you know, everyone is flawed, uh, and you talk about historical figures, you know, Bowie, Crockett, Travis, they all had their baggage, right. but at that moment in time, uh, they were men who, you know, were cut above all others, and it's a good thing, or we wouldn't be having this conversation, at least not in English. We wouldn't, you know, in American history, you see that all the time, where during the time when our country needs it, people step forward and, yeah. and do that, that kind of thing. Now it seems, too much where people are willing to just throw people over the bridge because of personal flaws in their life where they might otherwise be very dynamic leaders and qualified people to help move the issues forward. Yeah, we, you know, we have an history, a history of in times of crisis, folks rise to the occasion. and uh, Maybe we could use a few more folks rising to the occasion here in Texas these days. Well, tell us a little bit more about this event that's going to happen now. What's the, the pomp and circumstance? Or the well, it's, uh, it, was, it was a difficult thing. To, the, the letter is contained in the state archives there at the building just east of the Capitol. Uh, and you're responsible for these? Well, documents. no, I'm not. Uh, this okay. is the Texas State Library and Archives Commission. Okay. And they are the custodians of uh, many historical documents. The land office, we have some historical documents as well, but ours are limited to those documents that have to do with land. Uh, but the Texas State Library and Archives Commission uh, was not exactly excited about this idea to take this out of the archives for its stored uh, with humidity control, temperature control, 
light, uh, UV light controls. They were not excited about it. The letter has only been in the possession of Texas since I think about 1889 when the Travis family sold it to Texas for 85 or 95 dollars. Uh, and it is in fragile condition. I mean, light uh, can have a significant negative impact. So we had to do a lot of things. We've raised $100,000. We're going to spend $20,000 on a special case made in Germany. Uh, Texas Department of Public Safety, local law enforcement, Texas National Guard. We're going to have armed escort. We're going to have 24-7 security next to the letter in the Alamo Chapel. Uh, we've got a budget for education and outreach. There's going to be a documentary uh, done on the, on, on the history of it itself and then on the actual movement to and from the Alamo. Uh, armed escort, uh, DPS says they're planning on having helicopters. Uh, you know, but uh, it is, uh, I, I mean, I get, uh, I can almost tear up thinking about it. And, and certainly the hair on the back of my neck stands up thinking about it. Right. But this letter going back, first time, 177 years. Well, we look forward to hopefully having the opportunity to go with you in, in yeah, February. Good. And, we look forward to having you there. And, uh, and watch this significant event happen. So good. thank you for taking the time to, to tell us about all it. Right. And uh, we'll make sure all of our readers know about it in the future. Good. good. Thank right. you. Thanks.